Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, and I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Hinks. But, Kevin, let's bring in our next guest, and that's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio.com. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Hey, good to, have, good to be with you guys. All right, so we're talking booze today, STZ, Constellation Brands. That stock's hitting all-time highs above 255 today, going into this <laughs> earnings report on Thursday. What kind of data are you seeing? It, it's got to be positive, right? Uh, if you take a look at the stock, uh, what are you guys seeing as far as data goes on Constellation Brands? Well, there's good news and there's bad news for Constellation Brands. I think, you know, as a company, they own, you know, two of the three top imported beers in the U.S. Um, they have a really nice portfolio that allows them to weather kind of any storm of consumer trend. Um, you know, but on the on the negative side of things, um, according to like folio data, at least, and some other uh, corroborating data, uh, you know, people are just less interested in drinking alcohol than they were, especially a year ago. Um, you know, we're seeing a, a real shift in the consumer towards uh, mindfulness, towards, um, you know, functional ingredients that are uh, good for the immune system, good for uh, overall happiness. And so uh, younger generations, uh, you know, ditching uh, alcohol, at least not in a cold turkey fashion, but at least in a choice by choice kind of way, you can see non-alcoholic beverage demand uh, really rising. And, uh, you know, on a breakdown of, of all of these companies against each other, you know, we see this uh, across the board uh, decline in the number of people uh, talking about uh, drinking these uh, products. And so, you know, I think that's probably uh, good for a society that's uh, endured what what we've endured over the last uh, 20 months or so. Uh, but it's going to be companies like uh, Constellation Brands, uh, Budweiser, that have a broad portfolio of offerings that can uh, deal with these types of uh, consumer shifts the best. And we think, um, you know, even though uh, Constellation Brands has the biggest, you know, negative uh, move on this uh, chart, it's really because of how powerful uh, their brand was the year prior. And so they have a really, really good broad uh, portfolio of drinks, two of the three best imports. They're well positioned to deal with anything. It's just uh, there's a little bit of a headwind coming towards the industry. And it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out and how long uh, this new, you know, kind of not alcohol free, but less alcohol in my life type of movement lasts because it, it really does seem to be uh, something that younger generations are very committed to. Andy, clearly you're not polling the western suburbs of <laughs> Illinois because we're hitting it hard out here over these over these holidays. But um, my, my, my question for you is, Andy, is it looks like the beer sales are still pretty strong, right? They've got Corona, Modelo, and my favorite, not on that list, Pacifico is one of their favorites. But uh, my question is, can you give us an update or do you have data on the hard seltzer market? That's the one that seems to be a little more volatile as we, as we come to the end of 2021 into 22. Some of the young kids don't seem to be drinking the hard seltzer like they were. No, it's, it's actually... Um... You know, you're you're spot on, Kevin. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you've got your finger on the pulse of the youngsters. Uh, <laughs> we're seeing uh, data on, you know, talking about drinking hard seltzers down uh, 8% year over year. And 8% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider the trajectory that hard seltzers were on, uh, especially as we went into the pandemic, it was unbelievable uh, how hot that product category got. So to see that go negative year over year, uh, is not a good sign uh, for that industry. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a proliferation of brands that have entered that field, and it's going to be tough for any of them to uh, to really succeed with that much competition in a, uh, you know, what now looks to have been a, a market that's already peaked. Yeah, and we already had our barometer here in the office here with Jenny Horn as far as uh, pushing away from uh, the hard seltzers. She's definitely turned away from that. So kind of knew that was coming. But, Andy, if you take a look at that, what, what I don't get or what I'm kind of trying to figure out is the stock price at all-time highs. And the analyst community over the last week has come out and price target hikes across the board above $300 uh, for Constellation mm -hmm. Brands going into this 
uh, earnings report. So the momentum is there from, you know, Wall Street. But then your data is showing that purchase intent for a lot of this stuff is going down by in, in Constellation Brands at the bottom. Do we have to have a breaking point here? Because the stock on a technical basis is really overbought at this point. Yeah, um, you know, the way I look at it, and this is where sometimes, um, you know, the, the the data presentation can be a little misleading and need some context. When you look at something like Constellation Brands being down 44% year over year and being the biggest loser of the bunch, um, that looks super bearish until you consider uh, kind of what the market had expected based on earlier quarters this year, um, where we think that uh, despite the stock price being up, we do think that Wall Street is anticipating a slowdown in these super hot categories because what we saw the year prior was so hot that everyone kind of knew it was not sustainable. So going into this earnings report, we are pretty neutral. If anything, a slight bullish lean on Constellation Brands uh, just because the company does have the highest hap consumer happiness rating of all of the companies we track in this space. Uh, and, you know, like we said, a really broad portfolio. So it gives them an opportunity to pivot uh, with the consumer really well. And I think uh, that's probably what Wall Street is anticipating is that some of the smaller competitors will be the first uh, to fall off the grid uh, if this, um, you know, lower alcohol consumption trend uh, really takes hold. Yeah, and uh, I think at the, uh, the liquor stores around me in the city of Chicago, it seemed like uh, maybe the supply chain issues were always also hurting because there wasn't a lot on the shelves there. But, Kevin, did you have a follow-up here for Andy real quick? I just want to make sure that y you don't think, Andy, your data is showing that there's an overall drop-off, not a rotation, let, let's say, from hard seltzer into other categories, but you think it's an overall drop-off because some of the... Uh, you know, Constellation Brands has actually guided higher in the last three months in terms of their earnings for, for, for the full year. They've guided, you know, slightly higher than they were before. So are you seeing, so I want, just want to make sure that, that we have this right. Are they rotating from some of the weaker brands like wine and spirits and seltzer into beer? Or is this an overall drop off in the numbers of people drinking alcohol? It's people drinking, people are drinking a little bit less. Uh, and a company like Constellation Brands, uh, you know, ironically is well positioned for that compared to peers because they offer such a wide variety of products that are so well liked by consumers. So whichever way people turn, Constellation is likely to pick up market share uh, from some of its uh, smaller or more niche competitors that only make beer or only make seltzers. Uh, Constellation's in a pretty good spot. All right, great stuff and great data as always, Andy. Appreciate <coughs> it very much. Uh, have a great day. Thanks, you too. All right.